Welcome back. A vote on trucks only tolling could happen this week. We will see and then we'll be able to finally see who is for and against them. Democrats and Governor Lamont remain confident that they have the votes to put 12 toll gantries on Connecticut bridges in need of repair. But Republicans have not wavered on their opposition to tolls. They say the public's trust has eroded now and the state is demanding more money out of their pockets. And has, this has been a no-go. Uh, GOP lawyers, uh, lawmakers who are lawyers, and uh, many <laughs> have of them, have finally up. gotten to see the details of the bill. And that's what you need, a lawyer and a good one. <laughs> and there seems to be a question over whether trucks only tolling could easily include cars in a relatively short period of time after implementation. Is that right? Speaking Len of Fasano, attorneys, whoa. here he is. <laughs> Senate Republican Leader Len Fasano here to share uh, your thoughts on the bill that was finally released. First of all, this special session on tolls canceled uh, the public hearing, though, happening on Friday. What was your reaction when you heard that we were just going to do this in the regular session? Well, what I thought was going to go to regular session, it should go through the whole committee process. It should go through uh, the bonding committee. It should go through the finance committee. Uh, and people have an opportunity to read it and talk about it. All the about interests. The uh, exactly. Let everyone come up and talk about it. So I don't know if that's going to happen, even though special session was canceled. We're going to begin session on Wednesday. Uh, they could do something called emergency certification. They could argue this is an emergency, which it isn't, but they could argue that to the they're the majority, and put it on our desk and say, we're going to vote on that, you know, two weeks from now, five days from now. Uh, so they could do that and just do it as an emergency certification. Are, are, uh, now, what are the big issues from what you've read in there? It seems to be uh, one of them is that the, the possibility that cars could be added. Uh, the language isn't solid enough to your liking and maybe to most people's liking uh, that, uh, to prevent that from happening. If it's going to be trucks only, leave it trucks only if we're going to have tolls. So what's really weird is that usually you start off with a bill that is like the bill that's in front of us, very nebulous, very open-ended, a lot of details missing, and you throw that out there and people complain and make suggestions and it narrows. They had a very narrow bill that talked about where the money was going to trains, to certain transportation projects. And this bill says, we're going to take that all out. We're going to let this Transportation Policy Council determine all that with DOT. So we're not even going to tell you how much we're going to charge per bridge. There's a parameter, but I would six argue- Six to $13. Six right? to $13 for the initial base rate. But it also says the policy group, this TPC, can take any action it needs to complete the duty of building whatever projects they approve. So even though the base rate is set, could they go above the base rate? I think that's open for discussion. So when you look at it, the, the other big question is cars. They wanted to put some protection against cars. So what they said was their protection is, is that the bonds that they're going to take out is going to have a a condition that says, this is where the lawyer stuff comes out that we talked about, <laughs> yeah. a condition that says bonding is only for truck tolls only, and we're going to be paid back from truck toll bonding. Well, okay, if I tell you I'm only going to pay you back from truck tolls, but then I tell you, you know what, now I'm going to pay you back from truck tolls and car tolls, I better your position. You have more income coming, right? to pay off the debt because it's not this universe, it's that universe. So how have you been harmed? So it's called adequate protection, adequate assurances that you could breach a covenant. Have we done that before? And the answer is yes. Just last year, we refinanced the teacher's pension plan. It violated the covenant. And the governor said, that's fine. We'll give you adequate protection. So what we're going to do is we're going to put money in escrow and we're going to fund that with lottery money should we ever you know, not make a payment. I gave them out of protections, they broke the covenants. So covenants are made to be broken is the bottom line. So yes, after two years, they could without a doubt change and say, we're adding cars, the bondholders are gonna be protected by virtue of that move, and you're free to go. And that's what's gonna happen. There's not a doubt in my mind. The other thing that's really wrong with this bill, there's no what we call pro formas. So for the last couple of bills that came out, the governor did this whole analysis. Here are the trucks. When he did cars, here are the cars. This is how much we're collecting at each station. Here's the car count. This is how we're going to use the money to bond everything. 
This has not a dollar mentioned. And I think that's why the advocates on the construction industry came out against this bill on Thursday and said, we're against this bill because there's no numbers. We don't know if it works. You got to show us the pro forma. The governor hasn't released the numbers. And you know why? Because it doesn't work. And he knows that it's going to show you have to do cars to make it work. What's this whole business about um, using bonding money to buy tolls? You had mentioned this sometime last week or this week. So the governor said, I have a hard bonding cap. I am not going to be like Governor Malloy. I am not going to bond above $1.4 billion. Not going to do it. In fact, during the summer, when the, they were talking about the bonding bill. This is the debt diet he talked This about. is the debt diet. It's yeah. a closet easier, as it turns yeah. out to be. But it is that it, I'm not going to bond above $1.4 billion. Not going to do it. And he said, I'm not, I can't make a deal with the Democrats, legislature, because they want $1.5 billion. I'm not going to do that. Well, this bonding bill that he's putting out, he admits that he's bonding $1.7 billion, which is $300 million more than what he promised. Why would you do that? Because you're going to take that and promise this person that, this person that, and that's what he's going to do. And that's a lot of bonding. Governor Malloy did do $2.8 billion, okay? But a lot of the times he did $1.4, $1.5. So he's higher than Malloy in at least three of Malloy's eight years. He's way higher than Governor Rell was ever. So what you're talking about, he's using that fat in that bonding package to go out and say, how can I get your vote? Now, I think people saw through that, and that's the reason why a special session was canceled. Uh, or people felt, hey, if he's getting it or she's getting it, I want it too. Who knows why? But there's a lot in this bill that one could object to. So you think the special session didn't happen because of vote count? Not a doubt in my mind. I don't think, uh, Senator Looney says he has 18. My vote count says he's probably right. He, he, he may not, but I'll take him for his word. But in the House, has never been a hard vote count. And I think the bill needs to start in the House because if Senator Looney is coddling these 18 votes, make it 18-18, he doesn't have any room to spare, why would he take a risky vote if it's not going to pass the House? So it's got to go in the House first so he knows that that place that on this tolls always said we had the votes but never showed their votes, he wants it to happen there first. And that's where it should happen. And I think that's what kind of cratered it, is that the vote count didn't come out right. The issue of raising rates as, as we go along. Who raises the rates, and under what conditions can they raise it, and by how much? So that's a great question. The bill can be read various ways. Even the Office of Fiscal Analysis, a nonpartisan staff, I sat down with, and they agree with me there's nebulous in there, nebulism. But here's the key part. It says that the TPC, the Transportation Policy Council, can do anything. This, these are not lawmakers. These are not lawmakers. They're appointed. There are 15 of them, I believe. You think lawmakers should be the ones making the decision on yes, rates? Yes, absolutely they should be the one. But I would say that this says that they have a right to implement anything it takes to do this transportation policy. And what they said was, we're going to give you that right, whatever it is. The only thing you can't do is increase the, num the classes to be told. Therefore, that means you can increase the rates because the only restriction is on classes. This is very open-ended, and, and I would view very dangerous. All right. All right. Uh, Senator Len Fasano, uh, we're going to be watching this battle very closely, yes, of course, will be. as we have been for how long now? Long time. <laughs> A long time. Wow. All right. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you.